Good morning, everybody. How are you? Uh, this is Mr. Muhammad Ammar teaching you the uh, English lesson to the for today. Our lesson is um, regarding SAT, uh, International Exam, which is so competitive, and you will, ha will have to be well prepared for that uh, um, crucial exam. Um, answering any question in any subject, uh, especially in English and particularly in reading, requires a, um, a lot of strategies which would uh, enable you to move forward and to understand fully the passage you're dealing with. That's why uh, we need to dive uh, deeply into the different types of uh, strategies and know how to handle this uh, type of um, exam. Uh, I will give you like an example here. Um, we have like a vocabulary in separately uh, de dealt with. Uh, there is no context and you need to explore or to guess the meaning of uh, this word. And then we will go into the details and see how we can um, answer all the kinds of questions in SAT uh, internationally recognized exam. This is the example. finishing the SAT reading section on time, or if you're just looking for ways to boost your speed so that you have more time to check your answers, the trick I'm about to share with you all will help you achieve both of those goals. And so this trick... So, uh, the word form likely means, how can we guess the meaning of these words? For sure, it's, uh, most importantly, we need to um, guess it and guess the meaning and start to find the meaning for this word uh, through a context. But if we don't have a context, we just need to uh, try to guess the meaning um, without a context. The trick mainly works for questions like this, where it's like a vocab in context question. And so this one's asking us what the word form likely means based on the context, but we're not going to read the passage. So we're going to answer this without reading the passage at all. So immediately you'll notice that the first three answers, shape, mold, and establish, are all primary definitions for the word form. And what that means is like it's common definition, so it's like what you expect form to mean. So when you're forming something, you're creating something or molding something, or when you form a relationship, you're establishing a relationship, and the form of something like the form of the bicycle or the form of, I don't know, the tree is like the shape, shape of the tree or whatever. So those are all common definitions of form. So immediately you can cross each of them out. Primary definitions are basically always wrong. So you just, if you see a primary definition, just cross it out right away. And then we're left with D. But this case was a little bit easier since we were given three primary definition choices. And sometimes you're not given three, sometimes you're just given two. And I'll show you uh, an example of that and how we can still answer it without reading the passage. So this one is the word hold likely means, so you got carry, primary definition, cross that out. Clench, primary definition, cross, cross that out. Because, you know, when you carry something, you're holding something. When you clench something, you're holding something tightly. So you're left with portray and support. And portray is a good example of an answer short. So which one is correct? Portray support. So we uh, deleted or raised some of the uh, uh, the answer, and we have only two choices: portray support. So uh, what do you think? Yes. This that just has nothing to do with the original word, and it probably doesn't fit in the context. So if you have some time, it's always good to like plug in uh, the answer choices. Like if you're down to two, plug both in and see which one makes sense. Because in this case, portray would just doesn't make sense at all. It has very little similarity to the original word, while the other two primary definitions are obviously very similar. And then the answer is a secondary definition, so it, it fits in the context and it like maintains the same meaning, like in terms of the context as the original. So the word hold means support in this uh, kind of sentence. Okay. Now we will go um, to the details and the strategies, and we need to explore them together. Um, Regarding the uh, SAT um, strategies, they are really varied and there is not only one single strategy but a variety of uh, strategies that you need to be well equipped with. Um, I'm going to start now with the uh, first idea or the first uh, um, um, notion in which we, can, we need to explore and uh, acquire. Um, for SAT exam, we have um, like 19 sentence completion in this test vocabulary. It tests your ability to know the words and distinguish between them. And we have 48 passage-based uh, reading questions. For the strategies, consider related uh, words, or familiar sayings and phrases, prefixes and suffixes, because they define the meaning exactly.
Work on sentence completion question first. So if there is a question in which you can complete the the um, the, um, the answer with the, some words, some vocabulary, it's better recommended to answer them first. Questions range from easy to hard. So you need to keep a plan into your mind for the easier question. You need to answer them very fast. The uh, hardest one, leave them to the end and think deeply about that. Mark your test uh, booklet everywhere and use the process of elimination. Like if you have two options or two choices, you need to delete uh, two of them and to focus on only two, to choose only one of them. Passage-based uh, reading strategies. You must annotate while you read. So when you read, you need to take some notes um, on the side, on the margin, and start to keep these um, um, uh, notes and these ideas and to combine them together to fully understand the whole meaning of the passage. Break the long passage down into sections. So if you have a passage which are so, so long, um, you need to divide them into parts. And, but these parts should be logical and comprehensible. Summarize what you read at the end of each section. Get a summary for what you read and write it on the test. Highlight key uh, vocabulary words and phrases. If you have very, very important, crucial, highly effective words and vocabulary, you need to highlight them and get focus on them and then uh, to get the whole meaning through uh, these words. Find the main idea of the basset and circle. So you need to find the main idea, highlight the key vocabulary and words, Summarize the main uh, parts, divide the passage if it's too, too long, and take some notes while reading. Um, while reading, you need to also to uh, keep into your consideration the tune and mood and attitude of each and every single passage. Ask yourself the following question while you read the passage. Number one, what is the author's attitude about this subject? What is his impression, his feeling about any subject? Is it positive attitude or negative attitude? How can I explore through the words used? If I say, if you have the words like um, um, gorgeous, um, this man is gorgeous, this man is um, a um, highly important figure in the history of humanity, this is really a positive. If this man is delusive, cunning, or like that, this is maybe a negative attitude. Which words add to the mood of the selection? So you need to also to, to know the mood and what are the words that set this kind of mood. What is the author's overall uh, tune in the last paragraph? So last paragraph, it's like a summary, summarized idea. So you need to uh, explore it in detail and to fully understand it. Passages. This is a very, very good information. Why? Because some people believe that if you have very, very long passage, the um, question will be uh, difficult. And if the, you have a, a very short passage, the question will be very easy. This is really uh, a deceiving idea. So a short paired passage, look at two passage and compare typically the most difficult question. So if it's a short passage, mostly it will be difficult. So short passage means difficult question. Long passage um, would mean easier question. Long paired passage typically the easiest question on the test. So be careful. If the passage is short, question will be difficult. If the passage is long, mostly the question will be easier and easier. Sentence completion. Strategy number one, answer the questions without looking at the answer choice. So you have to hide this uh, um, answer and then try to get the meaning from your own mind. Hoping to the dispute negotiators proposed a compromise or compromise that they felt would be to both labor and management. Hoping what? Hoping to enforce or end the dispute? Yes, your um, answer is correct. Hoping to end, to stop the dispute. Dispute like the problem, the conflict. Negotiators proposed a compromise that they felt would be uh, to both labor and management would be satisfactory. Yes, your answer is, is excellent. So satisfactory means like satisfying, like good for two sides, for both the labor and for the management. So here, hoping to end the dispute is our first choice. End. And then um, your compromise would that they feel this, their feeling or their state of kindness, their state of um, feeling would be satisfactory. They would be very, very happy. They would be over the moon for this choice. So we chose two words which are end and satisfactory. 
vocabulary and context. Somewhere in the sentence, the words will be defined. Sometimes you find the words, the words themselves are defined and the, their meaning are crystal clear. Ravens appear to behave um, actively helping one another to find food. So, ravens appear to behave what? Mysteriously, rarely, aggressively, cooperatively. He says here, helping. So, helping the tone or the mood of the word is positive. That's why we have, uh, we can get the meaning of the word cooperatively. So, cooperatively means in a cooperative way, helping people. And there's the meaning of the, the word, uh, keyword helping tells us um, our uh, like correct answer because it's this is the definition of the word cooperatively. That's why cooperatively is the appropriate meaning here. Both uh, and Wilson seldom spoke and never spent money. So I need the meaning of two words. The word, first word which would mean uh, speak a little or doesn't speak at all uh, and another word which means uh, never spend money. So the first word is stingy. And the word stingy means that this person doesn't spend a lot of money. And the second word is uh, fragile, which means uh, like he speak a little, he doesn't speak a lot. So he's like economic with the words. That's why this will be our um, uh, uh, choices or answer for this kind of question. Okay, we need to move to logic-based questions. You need to know the meaning of the words, uh, know how the words are used in context, and understand the logic of a complicated sentence. If you have a sentence which is so difficult, so complicated, you need to understand how it is made, how it is formed. Basically, how is the, the word being used in the sentence. So it's not only a matter of vocabulary, but also the structure, the logic, the uh, um, how they are connected together, um, what is the relation between different paragraphs, etc. For example, after observing several vicious territorial fights, Jen Godall had to revise her earlier opinion that these particular primates were always were always what ignorant, inquisitive, responsive, cruel, or peaceful. So she says that they were vicious and they were, there were some fightings or fights. This would give a positive meaning or a negative meaning, of course, a negative meaning. So the appropriate word here would be the word cruel. So they were always cruel animals. Two blank uh, questions eliminate some answers based on just one plank. We will use two examples as our practice. So we will eliminate one of these um, answer because the first one of them um, is inappropriate. Although its publicity has been, uh, the film itself is uh, intelligent. So in this plank, what can we choose? We need to read fully. The film itself is intelligent, well acted, handsomely produced and altogether so there is a contra contra contradiction at the beginning with using the word although is very vital here although its publicity has been has been what um has been tasteless or extensive sophisticated rescue or perfect so there's a contradiction between the first sentence and the second sentence so the first uh, choice should be like something negative and the word which is negative here is the word tasteless Although its publicity has been tasteless, the people didn't love it. But but the film itself is intelligent, well acted, the actor did a great job, and made in a, and produced in a very handsome way, and really it was respectable. So the first choice is um, our um, right, our appropriate answer, which is tasteless and respectable. So you need to get the appropriate answer for the two uh, blanks, not only for only one. More strategies. Start out reading the entire sentence saying blank for the blanks to get an overall understanding of the sentence. Always uh, be trying to understand dictionary definition of words in the sentence and answer. That's why reading a lot in the dictionary or getting the meaning of different words is of significant importance for you in order to be able to uh, fully answer the question in an appropriate way. 
watch out and be careful of for transitional words. If you remember um, the word although in this example, this is very important. The word although here, it's decisive, it's crucial, it's exactly very, very important. Without it, we would have been in a, in a loss. Um, accordingly, you need to be very careful, watch out for transitional words like but, although, however, e uh, yet, even though. That's why, if you remember, in our classroom, I was always hammering on the idea of um, connectors and transitional words, how they are important, how they connect the sentence, how they give like a different kind of meanings, and how they would enable you to explore your appropriate uh, answer. After that, we have the most difficult sentence completion question, contain negatives. Choose the best answer because most of the answer will be like closer. You would feel that this answer is the same like this one, but choose the best one, the, the one which you feel um, is the most appropriate. Check your answer choice by reading the entire sentence with the answer you have selected in place to make sure the sentence makes sense. So if you summarize the key words, the key ideas, the key information, if you divide uh, the passage in a logical way, this really would be an introduction for a comprehensive answer and perfect answer for a, any question in the SAT exam. We have here like a quiz and this will be uh, like our homework. I will post it um, as a homework and assignment and you have really to answer it and send it, but kindly, I am. Um, uh, post it on the school um, school page. You may kindly send it on WhatsApp group, but I prefer to send it uh, on the school uh, page and I will um, answer it and I will correct it. Um, this may be followed by a model to be answered. This may uh, depend on your ability to answer this uh, question. So uh, this is a quiz I just want you to um, go deep into it, try to guess the meaning and send the meaning and the answer for me and I will uh, give you a feedback as soon as possible. Uh, you will find also a variety of videos here which would be of paramount importance for you. Um, so you need to get very well uh, on the um, SAT exam and generally and on vocabulary in particular because it really um, represents a, a major portion of your uh, exam. When we read for context, we're using the parts of something written that immediately precede and follow a word or passage to clarify its meaning. For example, when I say I'm a little stressed about the SAT, the word stressed means something different than when I say I really stressed the importance of reading skills. See the difference? Throughout this lesson, you'll see questions that ask you about specific line references in a passage. These are vocabulary and context questions where you'll need to define C fragile. And so I will uh, leave this uh, um, um, video for you to explore in more details and to know the, the answer for all the questions. D emphasized. As you can see, the question is referring you to a particular line in the passage and asking for a synonym for a word you're familiar with. Stressed. So now let's take a look at the passage. This particular passage comes from an essay on American education and political values written in 2004. The sentence we're looking at in line 12 says, In socialist and communist countries, in contrast, we find schools in which cooperation is stressed far more than competition. Before looking at the choices, I'm going to come up with my own replacement. Uh, he means in this context that you need to go back to the passage itself and try to guess the meaning. Don't say the meaning without um, looking back to the passage because you may have a, a prior meaning, but this prior meaning is radically different from the passage that you are dealing with. So you have to be very, very cautious and careful and to go back always to the passage itself. Word for stressed using the context clues. How about accentuated? Let's use it in a sentence. In socialist and communist countries, in contrast, we find schools in which cooperation is accentuated far more than competition. That sounds pretty good. So let's go back to the question. Which answer choice is a synonym? Which word is, uh, would mean the same as stressed, anxious, pressured, fragile, or emphasized? Synonym for accentuated. First up, let's look at anxious. We're looking anxious for a verb, very, very so boring. that doesn't work. Next, we have pressured. Judging from the rest of the paragraph, it seems like nobody is pressuring anyone to cooperate, so let's cross that one out. Fragile isn't going to work since it doesn't mean anything like accentuated. 
that leaves us with emphasized, which is a verb and a synonym of stressed. All right. So the word stress means the same meaning for the word emphasized, okay? But in this context only and maybe outside the other context may mean anxious or pressured or fragile. You did it! Almost. So the context itself is the main source of information and without it we would have been in a, in a, in a loss and we would wrongly uh, judge the meaning of the word stress, okay? So be careful of the meaning of the words. Uh, have a nice morning. Thank you so much. Um, we have many, many videos. I advise you to be well prepared for S8 exam beginning from now. Uh, do your best. I'm waiting for your uh, homework and answer. Thank you so much and have a nice morning. Thank you.